thank you. And thank you for answering my questions while talking. No, I don't have quite, I don't really have a question to ask other than aside from these scenarios, what was the most outrageous thing that you made people believe? Kind of like you said that they forgot that they were wearing the headset. Yeah. Um, actually, there's a study we're about to run and it's, um, it's led by uh, one of our master's students in the cognitive and affective neuroscience lab. Um, which is the lab that Gina runs. And uh, this student's name is Nat, and she is um, interested in using virtual reality to induce uh, not fear, but disgust. And I think this is a great emotion to use virtual reality for because um, it allows you to bring participants really close to things that would be like, dangerous to their health possibly if you brought them that close to it you know or like difficult to like have those those things on hand in a lab like you'd have to like be prepared to like bring out like something like horrendously moldy and you know so it's a good you know it's one of those good situations for vr where it solves lots of practical problems but um what we've done in this study and um the data collection is about to begin on this one so i don't know i won't have like results for you unfortunately to t that i can talk about but i can tell you how we're going to do it um because i'm quite i'm quite proud of the yeah the it's gone through a lot of iterations um and so what they do is they go into a regular room um, with some books on the shelves, just like a small waiting room, if you will, in VR, in VR. That's the first thing they say. And there's a door. And then at a certain point, that door opens. And so like we always have a neutral environment that precedes our emotional environment. Same in the, in the plank, you're standing on the city street before you go into the elevator and go up to the top. And so in this one, you're in this waiting room. And then it opens up to a bathroom. And this is like the most abused bathroom you have ever seen like this is like never been you know cleaned before and definitely used before and found by all the bugs in the world and it's and we actually work with um a really really talented uh vr cinematographer in wellington he lives in patoni um his name is ed davis and um and he is the the guy who's responsible for like creating a lot of the original digital assets that we've incorporated so he he literally like let food rot in his like one of the rooms of his house um and so that he could like photograph it from hundreds of different angles because you can use a process called photogrammetry where it will take images um, it being the computer, and um, create a three-dimensional object that treats those images kind of like puzzle pieces, like a three-dimensional puzzle, and it will assemble it and go, oh, with all that data, I can like show you and texture um, the, the object that you are photographing. Um, and so he's done this for like um, different bowls of food that he's let become really moldy. And so he's brought those assets in and that that is in the bathroom, like on the ground or like in bowls in the sink, you know, and um, there's these like bugs that he has animated to, to be flying all over the place and you hear them. Um, and the, and then there's of course a, there's a toilet that we have put in the room that is just full to the brim with some horrible substance. Um, and then what we make participants do is walk, towards the toilet um and when they do so we we have some aspects of this scene that uh are meant to make the simulation more than just an audio and visual experience because a big part of making people feel any emotion disgust or fear or anything else is that you have a multi-sensory integrated experience that like you know you can feel things you can see things you can touch th you know you can you can um s sometimes smell things um you know wh whatever seems to be appropriate for the circumstance you want to you know represent all of those aspects and so what they do they they 
they're asked to take their shoes off and then they walk across this. It's like a spongy mat, but we make it wet and, um, and, and, and so it squelches under your feet and, you know, you feel that liquid on your, on your bare feet. And in the VR, what it looks like is you're walking across this like carpet that's saturated in some horrendous, you know, oozing liquid. And then, so you get past that, right? And then you are asked to kneel down and take your hand in VR and put it into this toilet, you know, to put it right into the liquid. And what we've done is we have a, a bucket that has warm water in it. And we've put like silly putty in it and you fish around. And so, you know, in VR, they just like, they're putting their hand into where they see the, this thing. But what they feel is that like water or liquid comes up to meet them. They have to like fish around through stuff. And the idea is that, I mean, you can tell, you can probably tell what the idea is, you know, I mean, it's just becomes very convincing. And the idea is that we can make them feel as disgusted as I think any other study could possibly and ethically do. But of course, we're not actually putting them in harm's way. And we're not actually making them do something that is like, um, actually as revolting as it looks like it is. And, and the best thing is we can like tell them that it's a disgust study ahead of time. We can say, hey, we're we're going to try and disgust you. It doesn't matter usually these, you know, because the dis like like fear, disgust is a very phylogenically ancient response. We've had it probably for many, many millions of years where, you know, if you encounter something that you recognize as a contaminant, there is a disgust response um, to keep you from ingesting it. And so yeah, that's um, that's probably my most my favorite. You know, my the, the the study where I'm like, we are using this technology exactly the way I think it should be used. 